thank God for his presence because we are in the end of days and we all are waiting for the coming of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. For the bride has to be prepared to receive the bridegroom and thus way we need to sanctify ourselves with the blood of Jesus will make us pure and blameless. That's why when God looked at Abraham he says walk before me blameless and be perfect. Because in this planet earth, no one is perfect, no one is holy, no one is righteous, except our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says, for all have sinned and fall shortage of the glory of God. That is what the Bible clearly says. We are sinners but washed with the blood of Jesus Christ and made righteous through his blood. Hallelujah! The Bible says, he knew no sin but became sin that we may be made righteous before God. And that's where Jesus Christ became a mediator between God and man. By dying on the cross of Calvary. By shedding his precious blood for each one of you and me. That today, that we can be called the children of God. Hallelujah. And that's why we are here, my brother and sister, once again. To give God all the glory and honor for what he has been doing in our lives. Because greater things are yet to come in the city. Greater things you must see in your life. Because Jesus himself said the things that I do. Greater things you must do. And we are all for greatness. As the pastor was ministering in the morning. For God has called us for greatness. Because the God who we serve is a great God. We do not serve a God of poverty. But we serve a rich God. We serve a big God. And we serve a great God. Hallelujah. The problem with people is they are not able to understand the word of God properly at its face value. But when you act upon the word of God according to what God says, you will see the power flowing. Hallelujah. So let us quickly turn our Bibles to the book of Matthew chapter 22. And verse 29. It goes on like this. The gospel of Matthew chapter 22 and verse 29. Jesus answered and said to them, you are mistaken for you do not know the scriptures. Know the power of God. Here we clearly see that the Sadducees came and asked a question about the resurrection. And Jesus Christ answered to them this. You neither know the scriptures, know the power of God. Hallelujah! Nowadays there are many Christians who do not know the scriptures. They think they know the scriptures, but they do not know the scriptures. Because even in those days, the Pharisees also knew the Torah. They knew the law. They had a form of knowledge. But they did not know God. That is very much important in our lives. So here Jesus Christ is saying that you do not know the scriptures, know the power of God. Because if you really know the scriptures, you will never live a defeated life. 
Because we believe that the word of God has the power to transform your life into an image and likeness. That's why when Jesus Christ was ministering, he says, the word I speak, they are spirit and life. Hallelujah. That's why when we read the word of God, when we apply the word of God, it must change your mentality. You see clearly. If your mind is blind, it's no use of your eyes. If your mind is blind. That's why the Bible says that the God of his ages has blinded their mind, not eyes. You see clearly, my brother and sister. Because there is so much of revelation in the word of God. It is not only enough by reading the word of God, but we need to apply the word of God. That's why when we live according to the word of God, we see the fulfillment of every promise that is mentioned in the word of God. Because the word of God has power. Because the word of God was not written according to the wisdom of man, but when they were moved by the Holy Spirit, by these 40 authors who were able to compile and canonize the Bible into 66 books. It was the inspiration of the breath of God. In 2 Samuel 23 verse 2 he said, The Spirit of the Lord was upon my tongue when I spoke this word. David is saying, The Spirit of God came upon David and with his tongue he was able to write Psalms. What? David did not have any form of education. But he had the Holy Spirit within him which was able to prompt, which was able to inspire him in writing the Psalms. The book of Psalms is either. My brother, my sister, and that is very much important in our day to day life. Because there is power in his word. And that's where we see that even Jesus Christ challenged the devil when he was tempted in the wilderness through the word of God. But the word of God needs to be backed up by the power of God. There are many people and many churches who know the word of God. That's only knowledge. They can tell you from cover to cover. They can tell you church history. They can tell you anything you ask them. Because they only have knowledge, but they do not have revelation or the Rima word. They have the logo that is the written word. But today God has given us the revelation word. And that's why the Bible says in Proverbs 29, 18, where there is no revelation, my people perish. That means the church needs to move in the revelation of God. Because God is in the business of speaking to his people 24 hours into 7 days into 365 days a year. God was never silent, my brother, my sister. And he means today, God is speaking to his people. Hallelujah. It's only that people do not have time for God to listen to with a small and still voice. Bible clearly says in Revelation 2.7. He speaks to the churches over there. And he says for he who has a ear. Let him listen to what the spirit of the Lord. Who is the church? The church are the believers. It is not a building. That's why when the church will be raptured. It is not the building that will be lifted up. It is the people. Which means that the, the church indicates the people. He who has a ear, let him listen to what the Spirit of the Lord says. God speaks through his word. And that's where the devil doesn't want to read the word of God. You do not have time. When you want to read the word of God, you cannot have much concentration on the word of God. But if I give you a storybook, you will be so much deeply immersed in it. That you forget everything. Yes or no? It is a very sad thing. Sometimes we see in the tubes. People are so much involved and immersed in what they read. That they don't care what is happening even at their side. They are not involved. I have seen it many times when travelling. You all must have seen if you were travelling by tube. You know what I mean. But it is only the word of God that changes life. Hallelujah. That is where Jesus Christ came. And given us this word. That by believing in the word of God, that we may walk in the light of God. You see clearly my brother, my sister. And thus way the word must always be backed up. 
by the power of God. That's why some people when they speak nothing happens. But when another brother comes and speaks, everything happens. What is the difference? He uses the same word. The word is not different. It is the same. But there is the power and the authority behind the word which brings healing, which brings deliverance, which brings miracles in your life. You see clearly, we see that. That's why we clearly see when Paul was ministering. The Bible says in Acts chapter 16 that there was a fortune teller. And she made a lot of profit to the master by telling fortune telling about people's lives. But when Paul came and saw that it was the spirit of divination upon the girl. The spirit of divination means seeking the spirit of the dead. We immediately rebuke the spirit. And automatically we see that the girl fell down totally delivered. Now when Paul and Silas was doing that. The Bible says that Seva, the Jewish priest's son, they saw. They said, oh, it's very easy. They thought it is only the power in the name. So they also command. You see clearly the Bible says that. And when they come and they say, in the name of Jesus, or the God who Paul saw, I come out, you to come out. What happened? Nothing happened over there. Finally, they were beaten up. And they ran naked. Bible says that. They used the same word. They did not say in the name of the Satan or any other name. They used the same word of Jesus. But there was no power behind the word what they spoke. Because the power of God operates with the relationship you share with God. By coming to church does not qualify you to heaven. People think that way. If I come to church, I am going to heaven. It is the relationship what you share with the master takes you to heaven. You may do a lot of things in the church and expect, Oh, I am working very hard for Jesus. That's what you know happened. Jesus rebuked Martha. She was so much involved in the work. So much of hospitality she was trying to show. She wanted to see that everyone was comfortable in the house. But her sister Mary was at the feet of Jesus, listening to every word that Jesus spoke from his mouth. So finally we see that Martha was offended. She went directly, she could not take it anymore. She complained that, oh, this burden is too much for me. Let me go and speak to the master. He expected that the master will rebuke Mary or give her some form of help. That's what he expected. But Jesus says, Martha, Martha, you are thinking too much of anything. But what Mary has chosen, that shall not be taken away. Hallelujah. So you see clearly, my brother and sister in Christ, Mary chose the best place. She was always listening to what Jesus was speaking. Because Jesus is in the business of speaking. Many times we may be busy when we come to church. And we are not listening to what the Spirit of God says. We like to do many things in church. And think by working so hard in the church. That Jesus is going to take me to heaven. No. It is the relationship that what you share with Jesus qualifies you to heaven. And Mary had that. You see clearly my brother, my sister. That's where the word of God has been given to each one of us. For a time and for a season like this. That we must apply the word of God. And behind the word of God we need to have the power of God. That's where we see in Acts of the Apostles that when Jesus rose from the dead. There are two things that what Jesus Christ did before he can depart to heaven. In Acts chapter 1, 3, 4 it says that 40 days he was teaching them about the kingdom of God. That means he was teaching them the word of God. He was teaching them the word of God for 40 days. And after that we see for 10 days they went to the upper room and they prayed. And the power of God fell. So they were ready for ministry. Many people have the word of God and say, Oh, I have the word of God, I can go and do ministry. It will not work out. You will be defeated. Why? Because even the devil knows the word of God. So Jesus knew that. You could have directly told them, You see, your, 
your Bible study has finished for 40 days, your training is over, now you are well equipped, you can go and preach the word of God. He didn't say that. Because he knew that even the devil knows the word of God. That many people today in church, they say, if we know the word of God, that is enough. It is not enough, my brother, my sister. You need the power of God behind the word of God. And that's way for 10 days, when they were obedient to what Jesus said, the power of God hit them in such a way, that wherever they went, the word just, they spoke the word, and they saw the manifestation of God's spirit. We see that. The man who had an encounter with Peter. Peter was just an ordinary fisherman, who did not have any form of education, but knew only how to fish. You see clearly. I always will believe in one that if you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you are qualified to minister to God's people. Or some people, they are too religious. They come and say, oh, you have theology, you don't have any form of experience, you are not ordained by God, so you are not fit to preach the word of God. Or they don't understand that the disciples did not have any form of education. God is not interested with your knowledge, with your wisdom, what you know. You see clearly that. And that's why he had to deal with Paul in that way. Church history says that the education of Paul was equivalent to a PhD degree. But he had to break Paul in such a way that in the book of Philippians he says that what I gained to be great over the wisdom which I have I considered all as rubbish. Because through that wisdom and knowledge, he knew Jehovah God, but he did not know Jesus. He had an encounter with the Holy Spirit at the road of Damascus. When he had an encounter, he thus when his eyes were open. And he started to move in the revelation of God. Because now he was able to see Jesus face to face. Hallelujah! That changes life. And that's how he started to move in the power of the Holy Spirit. That wherever he went, that gave God manifested through great signs, wonders and miracles in the life of Paul. My brother, my sister, if you have a desire to work for the kingdom of God, be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will teach you what to do and what not to do. You need the Holy Spirit. You know why? Because in this world, people will be with you. People one day will leave you and go. But the Holy Spirit will never leave you. You see clearly? And that's why even Jesus knew that. You know why he said those words? That I am not leaving as often. I tell you one thing. Because when the disciples were caught, they left their families, they left their children, they left their business. They had no connection with their family. But today, you can have connection through WhatsApp, through Facebook, through phone. But those days, they did not have the technology and they did not know what happened to their families. So they were feeling like they are orphans. And why Jesus Christ said that? Because Jesus knew that after the mission which he has compiled to do by his father, that he has to go to heaven. That's when he said, I will never leave you as often, but I will send you the comforter, the helper. And, the world. and he said something powerful. He said something to them. For he who lays his hand upon the plow and turn back is not fit for the kingdom of God. So he told that, that once you come into ministry, there is no quitting. Don't ever think that once I go back to my father, let us go back fishing. Let's go back to my wife and children and let us again live the normal life. God doesn't want you and me to live that life. Because once you put your foot into ministry, there is no turning back. But moving forward from anointing to anointing, from glory to glory, my brother, my sister. Hallelujah. And that's what God has called each one of us to move ahead, forward, not behind, not go. That's what we see in the life of Lot's wife. When she turned back and looked, what happened? The Bible says that she became a pillar of salt. Because she disobeyed. She wanted to look back at the world. She wanted, that means she doubted God's word. Is it really going to become like that? Is the city of Sodom and Gomorrah going to be destroyed by fire and brimstone? 
You see, many people doubt God. So she said, she looked back, when she looked back, the Bible says that she became a pillar of salt. My brother, my sister. That's why when you come into ministry, no matter what you're going through trials, no matter what you're going through tribulation, no matter if even you're going through persecution, the Holy Spirit is there with you to strengthen you so that you may walk the walk which God has called you. Hallelujah! That's where the Holy Spirit has given to each one of us. So that in our weakness, that he can strengthen us. Hallelujah! And that's what we also see in the life of Jesus Christ when he was praying in the garden of Gethsemane. It was the Holy Spirit that strengthened Jesus. Because he was going through agony. The Bible said that even his sweat changed his blood. You know, sweat changed into the drops of blood. That was the agony. That was the pain. And that was the loneliness he felt. But every moment we see that the Holy Spirit was strengthening Jesus because Jesus had to go and fulfill the plan of his father by dying on the cross of Calvary. Because Jesus Christ was full God and he was full man like you and like me. But it is the Holy Spirit that took him to the cross of Calvary. And that's the way Paul, when he writes in the book of Romans, he says the same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead is the same spirit that is dwelling in your mortal bodies. It is not a different spirit, my brother, my sister. It is the same spirit that resurrected Jesus Christ from the dead. It's the same spirit that is dwelling inside you and me, my brother, my sister. That means we have the same power that Jesus Christ had 2,000 years back. Hallelujah. And that's why in his name, we can do the same miracles, the same healing, the same deliverance, and even raising the dead. When we know the power of God, we can also raise the dead. The Bible says that the woman was able to Raise that. The Bible says that. Hebrew chapter 11.35. Anyone can read from it. Hebrew 11.35. Yes. Yes. Woman received their dead back to life. Because Jesus Christ said, I am the resurrection and life. You see clearly. Woman may able to bring back they are dead to life. That was the power given in those days. And the same power that has been given to them is the same power given to you and me, my brother, my sister in Christ. Hallelujah. That's why I say that we need to know the scriptures. You see clearly? We need to know the scriptures. Because this scripture has been written. You know, chapter 11 of Hebrews speaks is known as the chapter of faith. Uh, they had the faith that they believed that the husband can come back to life. And they brought back into life. It is true. In one of the videos of Renard Bonke, I think it was in Nigeria, that a, a pastor died. And the woman didn't want the body to be buried. And she came to know that Renard Bonke was going to minister in that city. I think it was Lagos. So they brought the coffin from the mortuary and just placed it, you know, exactly at the place, at the bottom of where they erected the, what I can say, the platform where praise and worship was going down. And when they started to praise and worship God, because the woman's faith was so strong, even her father-in-law says, it's better you take and bury your husband. She says, no. She claimed the word which was written in Hebrew chapter 11.35, that I believe that my husband will rise. And according to a faith, a husband came back to life. That's why Jesus Christ always said that your faith has made you well. He always said, do you have faith that I am able to do that? He was not testing his faith. He was testing the faith of things. Because the Bible says, how can two walk together if they do not agree? Bible says when two agree on earth, it is agreed in heaven. So Jesus had to come in agreement with the person. Why? Because we are in covenant with God. 
We are in covenant with God. And that's what the Bible says. They have got to come to an agreement. That means your faith needs to match the faith of Jesus to see a miracle. And that's where Jesus Christ, when he went to a different city, he could not do miracles. Why? The Bible clearly speaks of the lack of faith. The lack of faith he was not able to perform. It's not that he didn't have the power. It's not that Jesus was weak. It's not that the Holy Spirit was not dwelling in Jesus, that he was not able. It was, the problem was not Jesus. The problem was with the people of the lack of faith. That's why the disciples in a certain extent, he says, Master, take away my unbelief. You see, sometimes that's what in our heart, is there that sometimes we have so much of unbelief that we start doubting God even after getting many revelations or many prophecies from the men of God. You see clearly because the devil will always put a doubt where? In the mind. You see clearly I'll tell you something. When you receive a Rima word from God, stick to it. Because at the same time we see that the devil will send someone else and speak negative into your life. That's what he was able to do in the life of Adam and Eve. And God said that you must not eat. You know, this tree, the devil brought a benefit of doubt. And he was able to be victorious in that area. And there we see that the fall of man. You see clearly that. But he said, no, 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 no. God told us that we should not eat. We will stick to what God said. I'll tell you today that sin would have not been in this world. Because the Bible says it's only through disobedience that sin came into this world. I'm telling you today. Because they did not take God's word serious. And sometimes we do not take God's word serious in life. We start doubting. And the Bible says that the double-minded man or woman can never possess anything from God. Can never! Because Bible says that I hate a double-minded person. Bible says that. Psalm 119 and verse 113. See what does it say? Psalm 119 and 113. Ah. I hate a double-minded person. God is saying. If you are a double-minded person, you will never accept anything. You will not get anything from God. That's why the word of God says we walk by faith and not by sight. If you are a double minded person you will get nothing. That's why Jesus Christ said that no man can serve two masters. No man can serve two masters. That means no man can have two different thoughts. But you must trust in God blindly and that's what God requires from each one of us.
Jesus said, he did not appreciate Thomas. He says, blessed are those who see, not seen, but believed. That means there was doubt in the heart of Thomas. That's why he was known as Doubting Thomas. Because many times Jesus Christ, when he was ministering to his disciples, he spoke about his crucifixion, he spoke about his death, and he spoke about his resurrection. There was nothing new to them. It is not that we never heard what Jesus was going to happen about Jesus. They knew everything. Because everything Jesus shared with his disciples, whatever he did, they saw, he spoke to them again and again, again and again, and again and again he always spoke to them about his crucifixion and about his resurrection. So Thomas is telling, unless I put my finger and see, is then only I will believe. You see clearly that. That's the many people. Let God do. Then only I will believe that he is God. Otherwise he is not God. If God does not do a miracle tonight, he is not God and from tomorrow I will not believe in God anymore. There are many people who said that. You see clearly, God doesn't want your approval of who he is. Because God knows who he is. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus did not come to prove Satan who he was. Every time, Satan, if you think you are the son of man. Every time, if you think you are the son of If you think. You don't have to say, I think I am the son of man. I think I am a pastor. I think I am a bishop. I think I am a prophet. He didn't have to boast. Jesus did not come to boast of himself. Jesus did not come to prove himself who he was because Jesus knew who he was and from where he has come. Hallelujah. That's why when Nicodemus looked at Jesus, he said, Rabbi, you are the teacher of I know, know from where you have come. He said, he said, I know from where you have come. Even John the Baptist knew from where Jesus came. That's why when Jesus came to the river Jordan, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. The text of the soul. Because John the Baptist knew where Jesus came from. But his disciples sir, did not know. So when John the Baptist told his two disciples, go and follow the master, they didn't understand. You are the one who gave us baptism. You are the one who taught us till today. And now suddenly you are telling to go and follow someone who we do not know. But John the Baptist said, no man receives anything until it comes from God. He knew where Jesus came. My brother, my sister, he says, no man shall receive anything until it comes from heaven. And John the Baptist, because he was a prophet, before Jesus Christ came to prepare the, the, the way, he knew exactly. You see clearly, my brother, my sister, but whereas the disciples did not know who Jesus was. The centurion who crucified Jesus Christ till there was something that happened in the supernatural. Is thus when he accepted. You know why? Let me put it. The centurion during those days, the punishment, the capital punishment for a robber or a thief was crucifixion. And this centurion must have crucified many robbers or thieves. So he also thought that Jesus was one among them. But there was something that happened there. When Jesus Christ gave up his spirit, the Bible says there was darkness over the land and the earth trembled and all the supernatural broke into the natural. Is that when we see that the centurion gave his life to Jesus? He says, truly, he is the son of God. Because in his experience, he never saw such things happening. You see clearly, his eyes was opened at that moment. You know who? Jesus was. Like the thief who was hung on the cross at the last moment. His eyes was open to know really who this person was being crucified. And immediately Jesus gave judgment. This moment, this second, this minute, you shall be with me in paradise. Hallelujah. My brother, my sister, is that how you and I need to know about Jesus? That is the relationship which you and I need to have with Jesus. And that's what it is about the word of God. Knowing the word of God is not enough, my brother, my sister. You know, living the word of God is important. Having a relationship with Jesus is very much important. I'll tell you something. 
and having the power of God behind the world. That's why we must move in the revelation of God. We must always ask God to open our spiritual eyes and our spiritual understanding that we may know God in a reality how really Jesus is. And God will surely show himself. If God could speak to Moses face to face, he is the same God who can speak to you face and face today. He is not a God who shows favoritism. He is not a God who shows speciality. I will say when you call me, when you search me with all your heart. Jeremiah 29, 13 says that. Jeremiah 29, 13 says when you call me, when you search me with all your heart, then I shall be found. You see, when you call him from all your heart, Jesus will surely appear to you, my brother, my sister. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus appeared to many people. After his resurrection. Bible says that. Bible has proof. That Jesus appeared. And even till today. In the Muslim world. Jesus is still appearing to them. In their dreams and in their vision. To showing them about the cross. That I am the one who died for your sin. That without me. That you cannot enter into heaven. Many in one of his messages I have seen. They said that in the country of Algeria. That they were. No pastors or no evangelists who are ready to go to that country. Because I think it is around more than 90% of Muslim populated country. And they were feared because they always killed. He said about something. But the work of God will not stop. He said Jesus started to appear to them in their homes. In visions and in dreams. And taught them the Bible. That they became Christians. Not by a man going and preaching. But through visions and dreams of Jesus, of who he was. And that's why till today, Jesus appears to us. You know why? Because Jesus is no more in the grave dead, but he is alive. Hallelujah! And that's what we need to understand, my brother, my sister. Because he lives inside us. And that is important to each one of us. So many people got saved in Algeria. They came to know Jesus because Jesus appeared to them. If you do not go, the work of God will not stop. You do not go, when Saul disobeyed God, God lifted up David. If David would have disobeyed God, he would have lifted up someone else. It will not stop over there. It is not the end of the story. God would have used an animal, like how we use a donkey. You see clearly, he proved to Balaam and says that I am the Almighty God. Don't try to think that if you don't speak and don't disobey me, the things will stop there. No. He said that whatever is dead, I can give life to it. He spoke it even to the Pharisees and to the Jews. They were offended when Jesus Christ was coming upon the donkey. When was that? That was on Palm Sunday. Uh, can you tell your disciples to keep their mouth shut? Because the disciples were praising Jesus and they did not like that. You know what Jesus said? The stones which do not have life, they will start praising God. Hallelujah! He said, I have the power. These stones which are dead, which has no life, they will start praising God. That means, you cannot stop the work of God. If God has called you to go, you have to go. That is the greatest commission which God has given to each one of us. By saying in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 28, 20, go into the world and preach the Gospel to every creature, to every crick and corner, and baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I shall be with you. For God has called each one of us, my brother, my sister, who is seated here with a plan and a purpose. Fulfill the plan and the purpose of God in your life. God bless you. Amen. Let's close eyes. Almighty loving Father, we thank you for the word which has spoken. We give you all the glory and honor, Lord. Father, Lord, as we look upon you, the author and the finisher of our faith. Father, we thank you for the word that you have given to your people. Master, let it glorify your name. Father, let not the enemy come and steal the word that has been put in their hearts, Lord. But as they go back home, that they may meditate upon the word of God. Because, Lord, I am just a messenger and a mouthpiece in your hand. 
So whatever you told me to speak is that's what I speak, Lord. Father, let it bring glory and honor in everything that what we do, Lord. Lord, as you place every brother and sister, as you place this ministry and this church into your hands. Father, let it move from one glory to one glory, one anointing to one anointing, Lord. Extend territories and extend everything, Lord Jesus. Because this house belongs to you, Lord. This church belongs to you, Father. Sanctify this house once again with your blood. And let your name be glorified. In everything, whatever we do, Lord, you must increase and we must decrease. Give us a humble, broken and contrite in spirit. And the one who fears you, Lord Jesus. And let us live in the fear of God. Let us not fear man, Lord. What can man do unto us? As the verse says, if God is there with us, who can be against us, he said, Father. Let your Holy Spirit dwell in each one of us. Lord, reveal yourself in a mighty way to every brother and sister gathered in this house. Open their spiritual eyes and understanding that they may know you in a better way, Lord. Bless them spiritually, physically, financially. Let them lack nothing, Lord. Whatever they may be request as they come into your house, Lord, you will not send them empty, Lord. But you will answer every prayer. Thank you, Lord, for touching your people and healing your people, Lord, who are sick in their bodies, Lord. Father, because you said, I am the Lord that healed thee. We thank you for your healing power. We thank you for your resurrection power. We thank you, Lord, that you have done great and mighty things. We give you the glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's give a clap offering to the Lord. Hallelujah.